<laughs> wow. The owner a fantastic job on this. I actually cannot lie. It is. How you going, folks? You're very welcome along to this week's episode of John's Garage. This week, we're going modified, okay? We have a Lexus IS200, which the owner has lovingly enhanced in a number of different ways. So we're going to take a look around the car. We're going to get underneath the bonnet. We'll get in the interior. And of course, as usual, we'll take it for a drive and I'll see what I think about it. Um, now, this is I'm absolutely delighted to get this car. It's the first of the modified cars I have coming. I have a couple of modified cars, and folks, I really need you to tell me if you want to see more modified cars, okay? If you like them, if that's a part of the scene of the enthusiast or motoring enthusiast scene in Ireland, which you'd like to see. Now, I really wanted one of these to feature on the channel, and the reason I really wanted one of these to feature on the channel, especially a nice one, is for a simple reason. For me, this is the modern equivalent of the Corolla Twin Cam. Highly tunable, enthusiastic bunch of people drive these cars, and they're very fast, and they go around in circles, and more important than everything else, you have six cylinder, straight six cylinder up front, and rear wheel drive. So plenty of fun to be had driving one of these. But of course, the laugh is that when we first got to know these, and got to know you, and so on and so forth, these were considered really boring, like an Alan Partridge type car. Um, I should say, aha, uh -huh. um, considered really boring. Um, bought by older people, somebody wanting reliability. And now if you think about who drives these cars, it's the complete opposite. It's young people who are, or older people. Uh, it's people who want to hoon around the place, have a bit of fun, modify the cars, drive them, look good, feel good, and enjoy the handling. And there's no harm in that. It's absolutely brilliant. As I said, I really, really wanted one of these in the channel. So let's get on with it. Let's take a look around it and let's take a drive in it and see how we get on. Folks, before we get into this car, before we do anything with it, hit that subscribe button. And when you've hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend. Share it somewhere, anywhere, I don't care. Somewhere where we can see if we can grow the channel a little bit more. And apart from that, I want you to do one other thing. Let me know in the comments underneath if you want more modified cars. Okay, let me know that or let me know what you want. There's a little experiment, see how we get on and see what you folks think. Okay, okay, let's get on with it. Let's talk business end of the IS200, which we have here today. So obviously there's been a few enhancements underneath the bonnet of this one. First of all, strut brace, pretty standard fare, you might say. This car is also riding on lowering, lowered, uh, three, two, one. Okay, so let's have a look at the business end of this IS200. Now, of course, the owner has taken the time here to modify it, enhance it, improve it, and let's see what they've done. Strut brace up front, not major, you might say. The car is also riding on lowered springs and adjustable shocks. Over here, though, this little bad boy, all right? This, the owner tells me, is a compressor lifted out of a Mercedes CLK. That brings the power up to about 240 horsepower, they reckon. Also installed in here are injectors from a later model Celica. We have an intercooler set up as well. And of course, down there at the side of the engine, there is a modified manifold with one barrel coming off of each of the cylinders. And that's straight into a decatted stainless steel exhaust system, which runs the entire length of the car, obviously, but uh, produces some... Nice bang bang, boop boop noises, if you will. Um, now, to be fair to the owner, everything in here is actually pretty, pretty respectable. It's not giving mad power figures, but it is giving you what you want. And especially that compressor gives you instant power, the entire rev range, which of course is great if you wanted to maybe rev pretty hard and go around in circles, okay? There's a crow going up there. I don't know whether that's coming through in the camera or not, but sorry if it is. Other than that, other enhancements. The rear differential in this is now Alteza one, which again, different ratios, gives a little bit more pep and a bit more speed. It's an inline six cylinder engine, okay, from Toyota. And of course, this being the Lexus model, it wouldn't have had the same power that uh, Alteza would have had in the Japanese market, but certainly still respectable figures when it was originally launched here in Ireland. And of course, with these enhancements from the owner, well, let's just say it's fun to drive, okay? We'll put it like that. Let's have a little look at the interior now. 
Okay, so welcome folks. You're into the interior now of the car. Let's have a little look around some of the enhancements that have uh, been done by the owner. I'm going to address those first and we'll see maybe what Toyota made of the interior originally when they built this car. So the owner has ad added a couple of extra dials up here around oil temperature, air, air fuel mixture and boost. They've also fitted a short shift system to the six speed manual gearbox, which is a joy to drive. It's funny, even with this system um, um, fitted, it's still very, very nice, uh, nice Toyota quality shift is the way I'd put it. Clutch is nice and light, brakes very good and sharp. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely place to, to, to be and to sit in. Now, what did Toyota fit in the factory, okay? Nice air conditioning system, lovely radio, nice big buttons, but a great sound system in this as well. Um, on top of that, there's nice materials used here. Some hard plastics, okay, which I know some people want to moan about. But the thing about it is, being a Lexus or a Toyota, everything in here works, works perfectly. Works exactly as it did the day it left the factory over 20 years ago. In front here is what I think is my favorite part of the interior in these IS200s. It's the dials. There's a monochromatic setup here. Essentially, it looks like a Swiss watch. Couple of dials, lovely dials, in dials. It's it's very, very nice little uh, place to be. And of course, when you're in the interior here, you have this absolutely gorgeous sports steering wheel to hold. And it's a really, really nice, um, as steering wheels go, it's actually quite a nice fit, I feel, for the interior. Now, one or two drawbacks of the interior. It is a little bit narrow in here. Um, it is a little bit tight, but it was built to take on the BMW E46, which isn't exactly a spacious car either. So in that regard, it certainly met and exceeded the competition. Build quality, really, really good, as I've already just mentioned. As I said, some of the plastics are a little bit 90s, Toyota, early 2000s, but that's to be expected given that, well, it is a Toyota. Um, view out, pretty good, nice big windows, nice view at the back. In terms of sitting in it, driving it hard, it's a comfortable place to be. It's not a bad place to be, despite the modifications the owner has made. They've been quite savvy in how they've made them. And it doesn't detract from the ride, doesn't detract from the handling, and certainly adds to the experience, um, is the best way I'd say that. Other than that, I suppose let's take it for a drive. Okay, folks, so we're just starting off here in the IS200 going for a spin. Now, just one thing, I haven't really featured very many modified cars. I think I've featured one in the entirety of the channel so far, and there is a reason for that. And it's because I believe modification to be entirely a personal venture, which means I'm often scared when I put somebody's car up that people aren't going to like it, they're not going to approve of it, or they're going to say, oh, I would have done it differently, or the owner spent way too much money, they would have been better off to do X, Y, and Z. And that's why I just, I'm trying to be respectful, I suppose, towards people's cars and what it is they've done with them and what they believe in them. So, you know, I suppose treat the cars that way, treat them with respect. It's very important, of course, to do that. Um, anyway, let's talk about this Lexus, okay? It's amazing that with all the modifications, this still feels like a nice little easy car to drive. Except you can hear that supercharger is. Oh, that is fun, guys. I'm not going to lie. Especially paired up to the short shift gearbox. That diff out the back as well. Nice close ratios as well. Lovely acceleration in this car. I have to say, folks, I've driven a lot of modified cars in my time. A lot of them when I was younger. Obviously, you grow up eventually and you move a little bit away from all that. And I have to say one thing, this is actually really, really well done. It drives really nice. There's no clunks, there's no knocks, there's no bangs that forever getting them in every modified car I've ever had. There's loads of power. It's coming on really, really nicely. I have to say kudos to the owner for setting this up the way they've set it up. Now, the funny thing is they could go for a huge amount of more power. No problem. Be very easy to get it out of this car. They're really, really tunable. But I think the modifications the owner's made so far have been pretty smart. Without a huge cost, they've delivered a huge amount more drivability. And that's really, really key with a car like this. You just want to be able to enjoy something like this. Um, of course, you want to be able to enjoy it going around in circles. <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to do that for the purposes of this video. Um, no, for the purposes of this video, we're going we're gonna to keep it sane. Oh, that supercharger. I never have been in a CLK that has sounded like that. I hope the camera's picking it up because it's absolutely class here in the in the cabin. 
Anyway, let's talk Lexus. I remember when these were launched as a kid, I used to be really, really excited about these and seeing these. They had a really sharp style and it was unlike anything that had come from Toyota at that stage. Now, I know it had the Lexus badge on the front, but let's be honest, it really was a Toyota. The first, I suppose, real memories of these I have, seeing them on the road, and then of course, Gran Turismo. I could buy them in Gran Turismo, I could modify them, I could race them, I felt like a friggin' superstar. And that was the cool thing about them. You know, they were really, really accessible. Now, even here in Ireland, in terms of price, Lexus didn't price gouge with these, okay? They were attainable. They were attainable for a lot of people, but the people who tended to buy them, because the Lexus dealership was tagged onto the Toyota dealership, it tended to be older people, and the same problem in Britain, not problem, but, you know, they, and a certain image grew up around them, the Alan Partridge, the Partridge image, you know, trying to be posh, trying to be something you're not, you know, and having your baby Lexus, okay? It didn't come with the same cachet as having a baby Benz and so on and so forth. For some reason, I don't understand it. I have a guy in a Renault Fluence riding my hole right now. Anyway, we're just coming out of the speed restriction, so we're going to ultimately lose him very quickly. Um, so yeah, these cars are really, really nice. As far as I'm concerned, beautiful drivers. Let's just get rid of the Fluence. Oh yeah, this shifts. This does shift. There is a little doubt in my mind about that. This shifts. Anyway, back to what back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, these are a beautiful car to drive, even in a standard setup. Once they have a manual gearbox, they're lovely. Now that does come with a warning that once it has a manual gearbox, this one does. A lot of these had an auto, and it was an ancient Toyota system. I've no idea why they ever fitted it to the car. Four-speed auto. Basically, what you got out of it was a car that was sounded great, looked great, really slow, and just drank petrol. And when I said drank petrol, I mean 20, 25 miles per gallon out of a two-liter was not unheard of. Maybe on a motorway run, if you were nice and gentle and nice and careful, you might get 28 miles per gallon, but that was about it. It drank juice, and for two liter, it made no sense. But once you got them in a manual format with the six-speed manual, they were actually quite a nice car. I don't know what it is about this car, but that fluence is back again. Anyway, we'll let him off, let him do his own thing. But yeah, this particular one, as I said, the owner has put a lot of time, a lot of money into it, and maybe previous owners as well, but it is a smashing car to drive. The exhaust system sounds amazing. The compressor sounds amazing. Despite the lowering of the suspension, it still rides and handles very, very well. It's actually quite nice. Steering, pin sharp, which is really cool. Seats, nice and comfortable. Christ, this is getting me thinking that maybe I should be buying one of these or modifying one of these rather than the Rover 75. But anyway, that's what that's the route I've chosen to go. What else can I say? I can't say a whole pile. As I said, for me, these are a modern twin cam. That's exactly what they are for a twin cam for a younger generation. And I really think Toyota need to come out with something like this. You see, the thing is, in Ireland, you can still buy an IS300 now, an IS300H. They're all hybrids. All the Lexus range are pretty much hybrids. But in other markets, that's not the case. In other markets, you can still get manuals. You can still get the straight six engine without the hybrid setup. It would be lovely to see a return of those cars. But I know Eamon Ryan is just going to wag his finger and say, uh-uh, polar bears, guys, polar bears, ice caps, and so on and so forth. And I'm not... I'm not dismissing any of that and I'm not I'm not against any of that. I understand why that's why the environment is so important to us, but it still does make me sad that something like this, something attainable like this, is probably just not gonna happen again. It's just a thing of the past. God, I could spin around this and drift all the way around if it was another time, if I was a younger guy. Anyway, before I leave you. I'm just going to gun it one last time, because why not? Oh, that supercharger is bloody great. Anyway, folks, with that, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to let me know if you want more modified cars. And adios, we'll see you next week, folks. Bye-bye.